Hi, this is Nancy Chanteau, and I'm here to talk a little bit more with you about depletion. Uh, I got a question about the markers of depletion. How do you know where you are on the scale? And, um, and then what do you, how do you make a replenishment plan? So I wanted to talk about those two things today. The scale, the depletion scale, Julia Kelleher created this, um, a, a 20 point scale or a negative 10 to zero to positive 10 scale to describe our interior um, energy levels, um, our ability from that energy to do things in the world. Um, and depletion is very useful working side by side with Christine Masarandrino's spoon theory, um, which is uh, the idea that we have limited energy um, especially in situations where there's some sort of chronic disease or disability and that the, it takes spoons to do ordinary maintenance activities during our day. If we don't have enough spoons, we, um, we need to manage our spoons in order to take care of the activities of our day. Um, and then if we, need, if we want to stretch, we might not be able to do that if we don't have enough spoons for that, trying something new or, or um, doing something difficult. So de depletion is more about our underlying and ongoing levels of energy. Um, I like to think of the depletion scale and then the depletion range. So um, not only are we operating on the negative 10 to zero to positive 10 scale um, on any given day or moment, but we're also uh, working within, we tend not to go outside of our depletion range. So for example, um, if we tend to operate um, maybe down to a negative five, we might only ever get up to a positive two on the positive scale because um, we're letting ourselves kind of hang out in that, um, that range. If, for example, you change your range and you start living around a positive five, you might not let yourself get below a negative two before you start attempting to do major replenishment activities. So um, the range can be important to pay attention to as well as where you are on the scale exactly. So I'm just gonna talk about the scale. I'm gonna start with zero, which is neutral fragile. Zero is this place where we could um, gain a little energy and feel better or lose a little energy and feel worse. Um, I call it a neutral fragile space because oftentimes um, zero is where we start to feel better, but it's not necessarily a solid feeling better. Um, it's, that's why I call it neutral fragile. Oftentimes, if we've been hanging out in negative numbers, zero is gonna feel blissfully good. Um, and if we start spending our energy from zero, um, we can deplete ourselves again really quickly. Uh, and I often will encourage people who aren't usually hanging out in the positive numbers to get to zero and then instead of um, spending that energy right away because they started to feel good, keep going, keep replenishing, get yourself up to a positive three or a positive five. And then from there, if you spend a little energy and deplete yourself a little bit, you're just going down from a three to a one or from a five to a three. Um, and that is not quite so risky for us as going from a zero to a negative two would be. Um, so negative one, negative two, under starting to get into the negative territory in the depletion scale, this area is, um, we're a little tired, a little worn out, a little bit, you know, everything feels like it's a little hard. Um, we don't feel good in our bodies. Uh, sometimes we can feel a little more emotional. Um, things that normally feel good to us might not. Um, we might be able to do some of the things that are easier, like going for um, a moderate walk versus doing something hard like going for a run. Uh, going for a run might make us feel worse rather than better when we're starting to get depleted. Um, so essentially it's an under the weather feeling and not feeling very good in our bodies, maybe a little emotional. As we start to get down to negative three, we're going to start seeing um, that, that feeling of depletion and not having the energy to do things affecting our day to day. So negative one, negative two, usually you can just get a good night's sleep and feel better. But when we start to get down to negative three, um, even if we got a couple points of energy, we're still in the negative territory. So the feeling bad feeling is starting to um, become more per pervasive and it's likely to start affecting our relationships, our mood, our ability to function, um, our quality of our work. We might be you know, falling asleep at work or having difficulty thinking through things. 
um, we might be grumpy or short with people or, um, again, feeling very emotional. We might take things more personally. Um, we're more likely, as we start going down the scale, we're more likely to rescue, which is to do something more than our share or more than we want to do in order to solve problems instead of being able to put in the effort and energy to negotiate and cooperate with people where we would ask for 100% of what we want 100% of the time and then negotiate agreements. So negative three is starting to get into that um, territory where it starts to feel a little bit more hopeless because it's harder. It's going to be harder to get to zero or above from negative three. As we get down into negative four and negative five, we start getting into very emotional territory. When somebody sits down in my office and just bursts into tears, I'll say, you know, where are you on the depletion scale? Very often they're at negative five or below. Um, negative four and negative five uh, will both have, um, people will start having pig attacks, which is um, in our, in Skills for Change, we talk about the pig as being the cops in our head, the internalized oppression and the shame that tells us that, that we're doing something wrong, that we're not good enough, that um, we're stupid or lazy or crazy or ugly or bad, or in some way there's something wrong with us. So um, being able to identify uh, that for whatever reason, the situation that we're in is making us emotional, that we're um, exhausted, that we feel bad about ourselves, that it's our fault, that we're taking things personally, that we're definitely rescuing. And then uh, we're, again, when we're talking about negative five, um, we're, uh, again, talking about a, a space where it's going to be hard to get in a single day back up to zero. So now we're going to need multiple days of replenishment before we can get into positive territory for the, you know, it's most likely. We might be able to get two or three points of replenishment in a day, but it's, it's harder to go up five points of replenishment in a single day. Um, when we're starting to get into this territory too, um, we it might not just be an energetic depletion, we might actually be systemically depleted by something going on, a situation in our life, a relationship that's not doing well, or um, some sort of business problem, not having enough money, um, having you know paperwork or legal issues, um, being in some sort of ongoing fight. These kinds of things situationally can also lend itself to being at this level of depletion because it, you know, even if we do get enough sleep, eat well, um, take care of ourselves, do self-care practices, that might not be enough to get us into positive territory. As we go down negative six, negative seven, there can be this spot where we actually start kind of getting into cruise control in our depletion and we might stop noticing that we're depleted. So um, negative seven is a really dangerous spot because we've been depleted for so long that we start stop paying attention to it and just feel terrible all the time but don't really notice. It becomes normalized. And from this place, we can actually not really know that we don't have anything to give. We're definitely at this point rescuing a lot. The likelihood is that we just don't have the energy to negotiate anything. And so we're, if we're going to try and solve a problem, it's going to be through doing something extra or not being able to do our share. Um, so rescue being defined as doing more than our share or more than we want to do or less than our share or less than we want to do or feeling persecutorial about it. Um, although at negative seven, we often don't have the energy to persecute because we're, we, there's a flatness that can come around negative seven where, um, one of the things I talk about, um, is high functioning affect that, that some of us are really good at operating as if we're fine when we're depleted. Um, and people don't know. And so if you tell somebody I'm, I'm wretched, I'm feeling horrific, I, I'm in really bad shape, but you don't act like it or look like it to them. If they would be, uh, you know, a drooling mess on the floor, if they were experiencing what you were experiencing, um, they will have a hard time being able to be supportive, um, because they don't recognize the, you know, the mirror neurons that are not giving them the information about where you're at. Um, and so they don't understand. It's hard for them to be empathetic. Um, and this is a challenge because um, very often when somebody's this depleted, we really are not going to be able to get out of that level of depletion without some outside help. We're starting to need to be supported and get outside help in order to get replenished. And getting down eight, nine, and ten, that's um, we're getting into you know the big, um, the big depressions, um, very difficult physical situations around disease, illness, um, 
disability, things that are um, heartbreaking in relationships, um, in, in immense challenges around our finances or our living situation. Um, these kinds of things take us into the negative eight, negative nine, negative 10 territory. Um, and sometimes people will start experiencing uh, suicidal thoughts. They'll start wishing that they weren't on the planet, um, that things would be better if they weren't around. Um, and the if somebody doesn't have those kinds of thoughts, they just don't have the energy to do anything. Um, they're basically, at, you know, when we're down in this territory, we're certainly going to be measuring our spoons. We only have enough spoons to do the basics. We might not even have enough spoons for that. Um, things like taking showers, washing our hair, those kinds of things start going by the wayside. It's, it, it starts getting hard to get out of bed. And different people have different ways of, um, of experiencing these levels of stress. So uh, your negative eight might not look like somebody else's. It's really important to, once you start evaluating yourself on the scale, um, being able to uh, con con communicate that with others, but also listen if somebody tells you where they are on their scale even if it doesn't look like where you would be if you were at that negative place. Um, and again, negative eight, nine, and 10, we're definitely in territory where we need outside support. It's likely that we're gonna need um, friends and uh, people who love us and also perhaps professional support. It might be great to get a therapist or a coach, um, get some body work, do, uh, you know, do things, get people to come and help us do tasks or change our situation. Um, so, even though it can feel impossible, um, we often will be able to do something for ourselves if we can ask for help at this point. So uh, being able to figure out what it is that we need and ask for help or even get help figuring out what it is we need and what we need to ask for. So I hope this um, walk through the markers of the depletion scale where it was helpful. Uh, replenishment um, I'll just talk briefly about it. You know, one, two, and three, you have a little bit of energy. You feel pretty good, but it's not that feeling of like, I'm great. Things are good. I've got this. Um, you'll start seeing that coming in that four or five and six territory um, where we're in a really positive cruise. Um, we have enough energy to do what we do. We have enough energy to do extra. If we do something extra, we get a little depleted. We just go down to a to a, th a positive three, and then we are usually our practices will pop us right back up the next day. Um, and then I like to talk about getting up into seven, eight, nine, ten territory because the access to those it's kind of a shame to set our life up that we only get up to positive ten on a bliss state. Like somehow we're um, we're only allowed to get into that positive territory on lifetime highs. I, I like to invite people to imagine what if your daily place that you were hanging out at was positive 10, and then, you know, you have all this range to work with in terms of, you know, you have tons of energy and you're, you're you know, what if your like best day was every day instead of like saving? Um, I, I think of saving positive 10, similar to saving your favorite shoes. Um, or, or saving a, a cute outfit. Like if you, do, if you don't use it, you're not enjoying it. So if you don't let yourself get up to positive 10, um, because that's something you're only supposed to feel once a year, that that's pretty, for me, that's tragic. That's part of the tragedy of our culture that we've designed a culture of busyness, that we've designed a culture where we're over-focused on, um, accomplishment and also kind of in this, um, competition to be the most stressed out one and to be the most tired one. If we're not saying, oh, I'm too busy, I'm overwhelmed, my life is hard, then um, we're bragging. And that bragging can end up um, being kind of socially alienating. And And I just would like to change that, that, to change how we relate with people having enough energy, that we would support each other to be in our high performing, um, best energetic state, rather than uh, supporting each other to be burnt out, tired, and exhausted, and frazzled all the time. So that's the scale. And um, to, to start, I'm, I'm going to talk more. I'll talk, make another video and talk more about making replenishment plans at length. But just to start, wherever you are, figure out where you are on the scale. And then um, write five things across the sheet. How, I, how do I feel right now? What are, the, what are the kind of emotions that I'm feeling? Um, I might be feeling tired, or I might be feeling exhausted, or I might be feeling uh, a little achy, or I might be feeling um, 
positive and joyful and hopeful. So wherever you're, whatever, how do I feel? And then the next column, what do I do? What are the kinds of things I do when I feel like this? So um, maybe oversleeping, um, not getting to exercise, or maybe um, I get up early and make my lunch before going to work because I have extra energy. Um, what are the kinds of things that you do when you feel this way? Um, and then three ideas for what you could do to replenish today. So for example, you might be able to um, do, you know, your favorite thing for lunch um, or go for a walk during lunch. Or you might be able to um, call a friend later and have a chat and just lift each other up or ask for support. Uh, there might be a time later for some self-care practices. You might give yourself a really um, soothing application of moisturizer or um, to be able to take a bath or go for your favorite walk or um, meet somebody at the gym. So what are the kinds of things that you can work into your day? You might be able to um, plan and cook a really delicious meal. Um, what are the kinds of things that you could do that would make you feel really good? And um, and then notice also during the day, what are the things that make you feel bad? Like, so if you have a meeting and then afterwards you feel like, oh, I just, that meeting didn't make me feel good. I feel like I lost some energy. Um, just notice that. Um, as you go through your life, what are the things that make you feel good? What are the, makes, the things that make you feel bad? So that you can mitigate the things that make you feel bad and um, build on the things that make you feel good. So I hope this video is helpful. Um, I'm excited to receive questions as usual. So if you have them, please feel free to post in the YouTube comments. Uh, I also have a Patreon page. Um, I'd like to give a shout out at the end of this video to um, a couple of my first patrons, Anna Mudd and Sage Moore. Thank you so much, y'all. You make the possibility for all of these videos and classes and all of the writing I do on my Patreon. You make it possible. I'll put a link um, both to uh, relevant classes on depletion. Um, I talk about depletion in um, the uh, centering class that I teach and also I talk about it um, on my Patreon. So I'll put a link to some other resources on there and you're welcome to go over and follow me on Patreon or, um, or become a follower, become a patron and, and get some awesome rewards including um, unlimited self-paced and unlimited interactive webinar classes. Thanks very much. I hope you have a great day and I hope this was helpful.